thank you very much, uh, Father uh, Stefan Rotling. It's a very, it's a great pleasure and a great honor to 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 have been invited for this uh, presentation and to uh, co cooperate, to collaborate with Macau Rich Institute for the last years. Um, actually, uh, today I will um, I will just present, I will make some comments uh, concerning my research and uh, which, well, some general comments uh, concerning my research and also, and then conclude uh, with my, uh, uh, my, hopefully, my next research, uh, with my, uh, my dental research I'm beginning at, at the moment, but which follows the previous research I have been uh, developing for the last uh, years. Actually, um, this is about Jesuit art in Goa, uh, the Jesuit art in Macau, between Goa and uh, Japan. Maybe uh, I should have, we should have also changed a little bit the, the title, Jesuit Art and Devotion. Because in my approach, I very much uh, focus on uh, this relation, this necessary relation between art, devotion, meaning, for instance, relics, and meaning, for instance, martyrs. And this is also a subject that, as everyone here knows, probably, is also very much related to Macau. Okay. So, well, so uh, in my research, uh, as I said, I, I, I work on uh, mostly, and also this is the title uh, of the paper. This was the title of my initial project developed at Macau Ricci Institute. And uh, so I'm very much concerned about the circulation of prototypes about circulation. This is the, the point, circulation in a global world. And why? Because uh, early modern time, and uh, I concentrate mostly uh, between the second half of the, of the 1617, uh, also of the 16th century and the first half of the 17th century, uh, that, may, that is the period during which um, really uh, this art was produced, or most of this art was produced. And uh, so um, uh, this, is, uh, this is also, and this is also very important to have in mind, that we are speaking about the first global age before internet, okay? and the Society of Jesus and the Portuguese overseas empire were two main figures within this first globalization. And so my research is precisely uh, the role of the Society of Jesus uh, within this global world on the move. And uh, certainly uh, uh, Goa, Macau and Japan, Japan are, of course, three very different areas in many respects, but they had also a very strong link. And an important thing or uh, uh, um, an aspect that I uh, also consider very much is uh, the, the point that this circulation is uh, in two ways. Uh, it's not necessarily only from Portugal or from Goa, India, uh, Macau, and Japan, but also the other way around. And this means also the formation of central centralities, as best put, uh, for instance, by Simon, Ditch, Simon Ditchfield or previously uh, by John Bossy, among others, and uh, more recently, uh, Kaufman, Thomas Kaufman. Uh, that is exactly the formation of new centralities. Uh, meaning, and what, does, and what does it mean? It means that, for instance, a place like Macau, which uh, a priori would be considered a periphery, now is a centrality. And that means that uh, art, that devotion, um, 
uh, are created in Macau, for instance, which is not the case, and then are circulated to Portugal, to Europe, to even to Rome, as we will see, uh, to, to Brazil, and to uh, many, many other places. And this is really uh, what interests me much, is really this circulation of prototypes, of models, of course, of artists, and of course, of devotions, and of course, of relics. Okay? These are the main aspects I really uh, deal with. So, um, anyway, as concerns uh, Macau, uh, of course, uh, when, uh, when anyone thinks of Jesuits in Macau, when er anyone thinks of Catholicism in Macau, uh, of course, the facade of, um, uh, of uh, St. Uh, but uh, which in reality corresponds to a church of Mater Dei or the Annunciation and later recalled as Immaculate Conception. And uh, also, which is also not to wonder, um, considering the fact that A, Goa was the central, was the capital, was the headquarters of both the Portuguese uh, overseas empire, meaning, and um, as I was just, uh, I was just telling Goa was uh, the headquarters of something called the Padroado Português do Oriente, meaning the Portuguese patronage of the Orient. And of course, in that function, Goa was also the headquarters of the over Jesuit overseas uh, missionary endeavor or enterprise. And so, um, a, so that also meant that uh, all the missionaries went through Goa. Some of them uh, spent some time uh, in India. Um, unfortunately, so far, I haven't been able to trace uh, which I, I have been searching for quite a while, but I haven't been able to trace artists that who might have worked in Goa or in India, and, and then later in uh, Macau and in Japan. Uh, probably, uh, well, we know mo the most of them spent a really a very, uh, 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 stay too short uh, in Goa, this is one of the reasons. The second reasons, I think, is um, that uh, they traveled also from mission to mission. And so um, they j j just didn't have the time to, 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 to work, uh, or at least to be commissioned with important work in, uh, in India. So maybe they, they could have made something, but not really very important stuff as they would have done uh, in Macau or in uh, or in uh, uh, in Japan, which are now my uh, three areas uh, that I am uh, dealing with. Uh, anyway, uh, if you uh, watch or if you uh, uh, see uh, churches uh, like the Bon Jesus, the now a basilica, and but or Santa Ana de Taloli, another uh, important later, uh, at least the, the reconstructed, because the initial one was from 1577. And you can al always, uh, like you can always find some kind of uh, similarities. And uh, this is, uh, has uh, various, uh, various, various reasons behind. Well, you, you, may, you have to think that uh, this is a world on the move. This is a world in expansion. Uh, and this is a period when so many churches, so many buildings were constructed. And uh, the Jesuits were very practical. Uh, and so, what does it mean? It does mean that many of these projects just circulated. This was a practice. For instance, under Tristano, Giovanni Tristano, Conciliaros Edificiorum, 
that means Jesuits, heads, uh, architect, engineer in chief in Rome, six main uh, plans were conceived and were circulated uh, from, from, from Japan to, 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 to South America or whatever. This is uh, uh, one aspect that is really this, this need to construct so much really determined that, uh, that there are uh, really some similarities. And um, uh, another aspect is uh, Jesuits were known and they are known for, they are right, uh, and I have here many, so we can then discuss that later on. Uh, but it's a very, um, it's a mixture of, uh, of order, of obedience, but also of flexibility. And, um, but there is concerns my subject, that means art. Uh, for, for sure, there were certain, um, certain aspects, certain concepts that, they, that should be uh, taken into account. For instance, um, as concerns uh, urban, uh, as concerns construction and their uh, in, uh, and their um, insertion into uh, into the city uh, cities and towns mainly, uh, such concepts as centralia, sania means uh, healthy or the, the concern for health, the concern for Roman, for Italian models. And here we have, um, which is also often the case uh, in, in, uh, in my subject, is a certain uh, coincidence between uh, the Jesuit uh, perspective and the perspective uh, of the Portuguese uh, empire uh, and of the Portuguese art at the moment, which is the Italian art. Um, like, um, Punti alla Romana and that kind of stuff. The, the, the all documentation is really um, uh, fosters really uh, Italian um, um, Italian uh, models, Italian prototypes. Okay, and uh, this is really also what uh, happens uh, in. Uh, Macau, what happens in, uh, firstly, in uh, Goa, for instance, I don't know if this functions here, but uh, for instance, the, the, this, this form of the, the, the doorways, this is clearly a model by Serlio. And why Serlio, uh, Somoza, all these uh, Italian uh, treatises circulated and were sent and were used. And another uh, aspect that, uh, uh, and I, I, I chose to, um, to put these two churches, one in Margan, which is a, a town in, uh, in the state of Goa, and the ruins of St. Paul. Uh, why? Because both of them have a doorway, a staircase, I'm sorry, a staircase. And why uh, this is also a, an important, uh, an important principle and important uh, aim of this of this uh, time, uh, the Ecclesia Triumphantes, the tr triumphant church, meaning what in artistical terms often and uh, meaning the introduction of uh, a magnificent mag uh, a discourse of uh, luxury a discourse of magnificent, a discourse of the Baroque. And uh, what is also quite interesting, and uh, in, in a way, a little bit unexpected, is that the uh, Jesuit, uh, yes, the Jesuit Church of Macau uh, is, has, uh, has clearly uh, this, or makes clearly uh, this uh, this uh, transfer from a late Mannerist to a new Baroque uh, language uh, sooner, earlier than the Jesuit buildings and then the Catholic buildings in uh, in Goa. And uh, one possible reason is the is the architect himself, 
who, uh, at least as concerns uh, the, the facade, is normally uh, considered to have been Carlo Spinola, a Genovese, an Italian, somebody, again, who knew in particular the Milan, the Milanese Baroque, and with which and who is uh, considered, well, there is not much evidence, but most of my colleagues, and in a way myself as well, uh, consider that, that there is a quite uh, big possibility, possibility that uh, Carlos Pinola sketched, sketched uh, made the design for the facade. And so it's quite, you see, uh, a clear uh, point, a clear and a very important point, by the way, because if you consider of, uh, the, also the urban uh, integration of the Macau church, I think, yes, I have it here, right? I hope it, yeah, uh, it's really, it, you can see it's quite centralia, it's, it's quite uh, urbana, uh, it's for sure urbana, uh, and it's quite, which uh, it's also quite near to the uh, centers of power. And besides that, it has, it's really a very, uh, from urbanistic point of view, quite a very uh, imposing uh, structure, which uh, is not the case of the buildings in Goa. And so, well, there are various reasons for, there, for that, but it's, it's really not the case. But the, important, the point is, and the good point, I think, is uh, that uh, this uh, facade, and this church here in Macau uh, was, um, was uh, in introduced a Baroque discourse previously, like 20, more like, I mean, if you consider it, uh, that it was finished by around 1644, and uh, the first um, Baroque, really Baroque buildings uh, constructed from, from, from the scratch. Uh, in Goa is the, theater, the, the San Caetano, uh, which is only from the 60s, 80s. So like uh, 40 years previously to, uh, to Goa. And this is really very uh, interesting and very curious and uh, is, an, is again a point uh, demonstrating the centrality of, uh, at least, uh, of uh, places like Macau and places like also like places of Japan and even and of Goa and so on and so forth. Uh, yes, I have uh, taken just uh, a few uh, some images uh, of reconstruction of the of the possible re reconstructions of the, of the College of, of St. Paul here in Portuguese. And uh, uh, well, just for the people who may, might not be very, uh, very related to the subject, well, what you see is really very, very, it's really a ruin and very few of, of the initial settlement, uh, which as you can see here, uh, it had like uh, 26, seven, Different units, so it was spread along the uh, along the column, the column, the the hill, and um, <coughs> sorry, uh, yeah, and here you have uh, some models uh, that uh, were used uh, in. Uh, well, this is the plan of St. Paul Vailo, uh, the first or, or the second church, because they had uh, the, this, this church was the a reconstruction of the first church of St. Paul Vailo in Goa, and which uh, has also ver very much influenced uh, the, the, the hour, I mean here, Macau uh, Jesuit uh, church. And uh, here you can see uh, a Portuguese, uh, which is, was, was also, of course, uh, expected. 
um, that uh, some Portuguese uh, favorite models uh, uh, are then also used combined with this Italian uh, language and, of course, then, uh, as we will later see, Chinese and Japanese uh, influences. So it's really a combination of uh, very, uh, of a lot of different influences. And here, uh, Goa again, and you see again very well uh, this model of the doorway that uh, was to inspire practically, it's very interesting because this model, this Serlio model, um, really was used for the model of practically all churches, all main churches in India, and also then in Macau, Jesuit churches, of course. And here, this sketch was a sketch I found, and I found it really lovely because it's a handmade sketch of the uh, Bon Jesus. And uh, when I was uh, preparing this paper, uh, I realized, which is uh, that the Bon Jesus, which is uh, now, uh, which is the, the main church in Goa, and as everyone knows, where the the, the the relics of the corpse of Francis Xavier is buried and is revered. Um, the, it, it's interesting uh, because you see several altars are coincident with the altars, with the retables, with the chapels, the side chapels here in Macau. Uh, namely, well, it, it, has, it had a high core. Why? Because Jesuits non cantat, but Jesuits uh, use uh, employed uh, lay chords in their uh, musical uh, services, and Father Rotling knows a lot about it, and uh, he's an expert. Uh, and um, but also uh, several ch uh, chapels, Saint Michael and the eleven thousand uh, virgins, and I will then come back later. To, to this subject. And here again, some, uh, some models just to, uh, another interesting uh, uh, aspect that in Macau was much more developed than uh, for instance, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Bon Jesus, and in the Jesuit churches uh, in uh, India uh, is, uh, and this is uh, another aspect that you can see here in Macau, maybe, maybe not really much more developed, is this construction, these four floors, uh, which is uh, somehow realized of, uh, and then, of course, also some kind of horror vacui. That means a very um, dense decoration. These two aspects certainly are related to the Indian context, because if you think of the temples, right, of the Hindu temples, uh, and especially if you think of the churches like Bon Jesus and later churches like for instance view I don't I, I don't have here the, the the pictures but they are really uh, this majestic uh, concept of the facade that uh, for instance uh, Gouvien and Rosero and myself called uh, uh, alta, uh, um, facade retable or retable facade uh, are really very much uh, somehow very much related exactly to this uh, Indian uh, perspective, to this Indian uh, context. See, a quite a very diverse uh, decoration practically no open, no, uh, no empty area in all this facade. And this is also something uh, very, very unique, uh, something that you are not very used to find it in Europe, for instance, right? And it's really very, very characteristic and very uh, particular and also very interesting. 
because uh, it has uh, a lot of messages. This is also, this is another aspect that um, uh, in relation, for instance, to Il Jesu, to Bon Jesus, Il Jesu is in Rome, to the Bon Jesus, uh, is that in Macau, you really have, um, it's like, a, well, it's like a Biblia Pauperum, right? It's, it, it really, it has many, many meanings, many significations uh, that are not very, that are really very uncommon at that period uh, in, other, in other places, uh, in other places, in particular in Europe. And uh, I was saying that, uh, well, the church had a checkered history. And uh, what you see is really very few of the initial settlement. Uh, the last, uh, the last, uh, the last fire in 18, 17, 1835. I think I have here some, yeah, pictures a little bit before, still before the fire. And uh, immediately after the fire by the well-known uh, chinery. This is a problem uh, with this church, uh, or there are two problems with these settlements. A, because Macau is very dense, so, um, well, the structure was very much destroyed, and uh, now it's everything built upon it, so probably there will be, the, either, either you would destroy everything, which you, you, could, you can't do it, so all, re re all reconstructions are reconstructions. And um, there are not very much um, uh, visual evidence before and after. Uh, actually, there is very few visual evidence. There are some descriptions uh, by, for instance, Peter Mundi, who, by some, or uh, Gemelli Carreri, travelers who came to Macau, but unfortunately, they didn't sketch or, or painted it. So that's a problem. Anyway, these are a few of the, um, of the pictures. Um, anyway, I was telling uh, about uh, my next point about devotions, Mater Day. Here you have, okay. yes, you can see began in 1602 and um, concluded by 1644. Well, uh, scholars disagree about the end, about the conclusion. My point of view is really later, that it means 1644. For others, it's like 1637. Anyway, in the middle of the 17th century. Uh, because it had always a very checkered history, and uh, uh, and uh, founts and uh, fires and all that and all that stuff. Anyway, um, Jesuits are Marian. Uh, are Marian. That means they, they they have a special devotion to to, to the matter. They Annunciation uh, was uh, was the day in which uh, the, the, the 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 celebrated Montmartre. The, uh, how is it called? Vow was declared, declared, and uh, later immaculate conception. And um, why? Because uh, because uh, of the, this is a national uh, immaculate conception was the uh, is uh, was uh, the national national patron of uh, Portugal, <coughs> and so. You have uh, really at least three Marian uh, devotions. Sorry, also uh, from an iconogra iconographical point of view, it has uh, it has importance. Why? Because, uh, for instance, uh, well, on on your left side there is now the the, the 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 sculpture of the Immaculate Conception, and it is uh, I like I love to to read and about legends and uh, relics and that kind of stuff. And uh, one interesting legend that circulated around 16, in, this, in, the early six, in the early 17th, was that uh, this sculpture um, had, uh, that the sculpture of the Immaculate Conception had uh, protected Macau 
from uh, from the, the, the attempt by the Dutch to conquer Macau. And so uh, these are, of course, all legends, but still uh, they can uh, somehow uh, uh, explain or, or be useful to explain uh, iconography. And as concerns uh, as concerns uh, this church, uh, you have of course the uh, of course the the Jesuit uh, classical the emblem, which curiously by norm it is uh, on top on the on the gable. In this church is curiously uh, upon uh, the the two um, the two uh, side uh, the doors. Uh, well, I'm not, well, it's only, uh, I don't know, but maybe because uh, they, uh, who made this uh, church and who were the sculptures of this church uh, had the message to transmit that this is a Jesuit church. And if you were to put it from in such a high place, it will be somehow uh, maybe not, not, not that seen. Well, it's a very, a practical reason, which I really don't know, and of course the four uh, first uh, Jesuits, uh, Jesuit saints, uh, which are also uh, by norm or which are are part of this uh, of uh, of any or of most uh, Jesuit uh, churches. Here uh, on uh, on your left, you have then uh, the the Asunta. You have angels, and uh, upon on the on the on the, on the you have the dove, the dove, and you have the sons, two sons, and uh, the and here uh, uh, one aspect that is very much. Um, present in the iconography of this uh, church is really the idea of death. It's really the idea of martyrium because you have really here uh, the, the several instruments uh, of the Passio Christi, Salvatore Mundi, surrounded by uh, instruments of the Passio. And why? Of course, because of uh, of the Japanese martyrs because of persecutions. Uh, Nico, uh, Spindler was himself a martyr, 1622. And as I will show later on, uh, as also everybody knows here, the several uh, relics or several bodies of the Japanese martyrs were taken precisely to uh, Macau. And so, uh, this is really a very uh, important aspect uh, represented by uh, this uh, facade. The idea of martyrdom, of course, in a Christian uh, perspective of, of the victory of, 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 of life, of afterlife, of the, of, uh, over, over death. Ah, again. And here, uh, with Chinese inscription, remember death and you will not act badly. Always uh, this, uh, some, uh, some reminders that, uh, that death, death is, is what is, is our last, but also our first, uh, uh, our, or the, the first moment of life, in a way. And uh, of course, uh, well, uh, when you think, about the, the artists. We know uh, a little bit about artists. I found myself uh, three artists, uh, meaning three um, kind of architects. And why do I say kind of architects? Because for instance, Spindler himself was not exactly an architect or an engineer or whatever. What happens often in these churches is that uh, the, uh, the drafts, the, the, the sketches, and what it was also the case of the Bon Jesus uh, that was changed by Valignano himself, uh, is that uh, these churches, the, the drafts, the, the sketches are made by 
by people with skills, not trained, but people with skills. So uh, my, I find myself, I found myself like three uh, Portuguese um, who di uh, directed and worked, let's say, as architects and as uh, engineers. And uh, then, of course, uh, several um, uh, uh, Macaense, Chinese, and but inf unfortunately, uh, very few names are known, or practically only the names of the members of the society of the Jesuits uh, brothers, of course, no, by in their in their majority, uh, are known. So it, we know that Jes uh, that uh, Chinese artists were employed. We know around 120, 150, but names, unfortunately, we don't know. We don't even know. Uh, at least for the moment, uh, if there were any uh, special uh, schools or, you know, we just know numbers and not much less. But the point is uh, that they left their imprint. Of course, you can also say uh, that, of course, if you put this inscription in Chinese, is to make it readable to the Chinese uh, converts or to the Chinese, or or the, for the people who, who should convert the neophytes. Or, but uh, still, uh, some ways, some, uh, some um, uh, important uh, elements, and the way to, to sculpture, uh, these are really also very Chinese. Okay? So the local imprint is uh, also very present if you consider uh, along, along this uh, church. And uh, celebrated uh, the most, well, Macau was also very important from, uh, from a point of view of painting. Why? Because the celebrated uh, painting school of, by the Italian Giovanni Cola, Giovanni Cola da Nola, uh, who Nola is a small town in uh, nearby uh, Napoli, South Italy, and he founded a, a school uh, in Japan by the late uh, by in the eight, in the uh, by the late uh, 16th century, and then he was one of the of the of the, of the Jesuits who had to to, to flee to to escape uh, to Macau. And he took with, with him uh, several or, of his, uh, of his uh, students. And um, one of them was Niwa, who had been, uh, well, firstly here, and then he went to Japan and then came back. And uh, Niwa was uh, Japanese uh, Chinese, and he was uh, the most important of this school. Well, when you consider this Japanese school, you don't, uh, it's, it was not a school as you as you would think our days. Why? Uh, because they uh, also be, because of persecutions. You have to think. 1597 was it, the the whole traumatic story began. So they moved from mission to mission. That means that also the the this the, this schools or this school. Uh, of Jap uh, by by Kola and his students also moved from from town from city uh, to city. Uh, anyway, um, this is one of the few extant paintings uh, of this excellent uh, painting school. For instance, they were the ones who introduced the oil painting in Japan, and and introduced the Western painting in Japan. But of course, they are also influenced. Most of most of them, they were Japanese, uh, by uh, the Japanese art, and this is especially important because it's really one of the few uh, paintings that uh, remained and that can be attributed with a certain guarantee. And Niwa uh, is was especially important because he was the only one who dedicated himself. Uh, in exclusivity to painting. Everybody else had to work as a missionary and another lots of, uh, but he was really the only one, the only, uh, the only Jesuit who uh, 
uh, was uh, only drop was uh, to paint. Uh, wood, cypress. Yeah. And of course, relics. Uh, Macau has a very important relics. Father Luis knows about it. And uh, quite well, the arm relic and several of the martyrs, some of them have, have been translated recently to, to Japan, to the Museum of the Japanese Martyrs. But still, some of the uh, martyrs or some of the remains uh, of the bodily remains are kept in Macau. And very, very important this one. Why? Because this newer and painters who painted here in Macau, their works were sent to Rome, and they are still extant at the main at the first. Uh, and the main church of the Jesuits, meaning Il Jesu. And uh, this one, uh, this painting, which represents uh, one of the most bloody, uh, most bloody episodes uh, of, of, uh, of this old story of persecution and torture and martyrdom, uh, the, the so-called great uh, martyrdom of Nagasaki in 1622. Um, is attributed as well, uh, well, to Niwa. And here I took another, another, uh, another uh, painting uh, because uh, this also uh, I love this uh, this subject of uh, of this painting because here in this picture by Niwa you have a concept that was uh, that in a way became uh, a kind of prototype for paintings concerning uh, Jesuit martyria in Europe, uh, in, in, uh, in particular in the uh, German context. Uh, yes, from Busemare in 69, and a small engraving, the so called uh, galleries of Jesuits. Okay. And uh, you have, of course, I don't remember here somewhere. Ah, these are from Japan here. But uh, all the martyrs of the society from, from, the, uh, from, from the beginning, the first criminale, until uh, a certain point, in this case, 1627, 1625, uh, 1627. And uh, this concept as of gallery, you can find really already in this. Uh, in this detail of this painting by Niwa. And why that? Because engravings circulated. And the first engraving with this concept is uh, a one by somebody called Johann Busemare from Cologne. Cologne was one of the headquarters uh, of Catholicism, as it, is, it still is. And uh, Cologne and Antwerp were the main producers of engravings. And so it's really very important and it's very, I love this detail because you really have here in a painting in Macau um, around 16, we think around 1635 already, a concept uh, that became very characteristic uh, for the Jesuit iconography in Europe, meaning um, in mainly in the south, south, of, uh, south, south, Southern German or in the German context. And here is another picture, uh, another uh, where it's interesting because you see Francis Xavier in his hat, in his chat. And the Curofone. Again, uh, the Curofone, by the way, uh, I forgot previously. But in the in the facade of St. Paul is also a, a, a a representation of the Naudu Trato. Uh, why? Because Macau is and uh, was on the center uh, of this trade between Nagasaki and, at the end, uh, Goa and Lisbon. And so um, this representation is also somehow uh, very uh, also interesting to see in painting, as it is in the facade of the Bon, bon Jesus. And 
probably not everybody knows, but this uh, this uh, this trade route uh, and Nagasaki was given uh, initially to the Jesuits to explore commercially. So there is uh, somehow always also, also always a link uh, between uh, between uh, religion, but also with between trade, between economy, between politics. And this is very, very present here in this picture and also in the facade. And another uh, painting, also an Il Gesù. Maybe uh, it's a martyrdom of Leonardo Kimura. Uh, one, uh, another, uh, he himself acted, uh, he was Japanese and he acted also, he was martyred, it's the 19 Nagasaki. And he was also, uh, he worked also as artist uh, in St. Paul. And St. Ursula, a very Jesuit uh, devotion and also a very Portuguese uh, devotion. And uh, this is again an important uh, aspect is that this coincidence between uh, the devotions and, uh, in, in my case, uh, national devotions or Portuguese devotions. Uh, for the Portuguese, you know, all the, the um, for instance, Lisbon was taken, according to, to tradition, was taken to, to the Muslims on the day of the 11,000 virgins, a devotion which is national, and which is Jesuit and which arrived uh, in Goa. Here you have uh, St. Ursula is here. This is not Jesuit. This is an ex Augustine church in Goa, Santa, uh, Santa Monica, uh, the only female convent in Goa. Uh, but uh, still, it's a very beautiful picture, so I wanted to, to take it. And also to demonstrate that it is really a very uh, broader and very wider uh, iconography and uh, devotion. And I think uh, I will stop now. I think I spoke too much. I'm sorry for that. And um, well, I'm open to questions, to comments, to further, uh, uh, further parts of to follow, of research to follow. And thank you very much for your attention. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.